It was the fastest federal search warrant to be executed in U.S. history. In less than two minutes, federal agents removed then six-year-old Elian Gonzalez from his family's little Havana home. Jim Goldman was the federal agent in charge of the operation. Tell me what goes through your mind when you see this picture. The picture that captured the hearts and minds of the American population uh, is a true professional that did an outstanding job. He did what he was assigned to do. He did it in a perfect manner. I think anybody in the law enforcement profession, particularly uh, trained in SWAT or special weapons and tactics, would clearly recognize that this officer is the essence of professionalism in that particular category of law enforcement. Goldman, who at the time was director of investigations for the INS's Miami district, reported directly to then Attorney General Janet Reno. Up against the barrier now! He says the operational plan took about a month to develop and was worked on daily by high military officials. The operation involved about 250 agents, and a photo that's been seen around the world captured the key moment of the search warrant execution. I would recommend that no civilian, particularly a photographer holding a metallic object, jump up in front of a team of law enforcement officers while they're executing a search warrant for the sole purpose of getting a picture. That could have been a tipping point. After the most challenging part of the operation ended without anyone firing a weapon, Elian Gonzalez was wrapped in a blanket and swiftly carried out by a female agent to one of three vans. The other two served as decoys. Her role and responsibility that evening was to enter the home after it was secured, take possession of Elian, and kind of nurture him almost in a motherly way. What was she instructed to say to Elian in that moment? She was instructed to um, speak to him in a very calm manner in his native language, Spanish, and to ensure him that we were there to help him, that we represented American law enforcement, that his father was in the United States, that his father was in Washington, D.C. waiting for him, and that we were going to safely transport him to Washington, D.C. to be reunited with his father. The boy, who'd become the center of a political and family custody battle, sparking heated protests in Miami and garnering national attention, was taken on a helicopter ride from the front door of the Little Havana home, where he lived for six months, to Watson Island. He was clearly fascinated by the helicopter ride. Um, who wouldn't be uh, a young man at six, six years old? Um, at night, flying over Miami, it was still dark out, the sun was just coming out. He was then placed on a jet headed to Andrews Air Force Base in D.C. There, Goldman personally handed Elian to his father, Juan Miguel, who Goldman says was waiting inside a secure hangar. Describe the scene that you saw when Elian arrived to Washington and was reunited with his father. We allowed the father to come onto the tarmac and he came onto the Learjet where he then was reunited with Elian. Um, the father and son embraced um, for a significant amount of time. Uh, both of them were, were crying. Both of them were clearly um, excited to see one another. Almost two decades after the operation, Goldman shares his opinion on one of the issues that has most bitterly divided Miami. I don't think anything should ever stand between a father and a son under any circumstance, under any political theory or uh, condition, uh, nothing should stand between a father and son. Goldman has since retired from law enforcement and opened a private detective agency and says he'd like to see Elian again. What would you tell Elian Gonzalez if you were in front of you right now? I would like to congratulate him for his maturity that uh, he demonstrated the night of the uh, uh, rescue and recovery operation. I would like to extend my condolences to him. Uh, of course, he lost his mother, uh, as we all know. Uh, the tragedy under any circumstance and uh, I would like to uh, know him better as a uh, now a 26 year old young man I think that we would have a lot to talk about. After Elian Gonzalez returned to Cuba he became a prominent figure in the Castro regime. His cousin Maris Lacy's Gonzalez who became his primary guardian and advocate in the U.S. declined our request to participate in the interview. In the newsroom Natalia Ortiz NBC6 News.